Uh, my name is Daniel Chiro. I'm a science teacher and I will, I'm going to present to you a lesson in integrated science. This is grade 8 uh, under the topic uh, plants and animals. Under this topic we are going to look at the first part which is the microscope. Uh, to begin with you need to understand what a microscope is. So uh, probably um, you have seen, uh, maybe you go to the hospital, you, 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 you are unwell and then they get either a blood slide or a, a, any specimen from you which they go to take to the lab and you've seen that um, there are objects like what you are seeing on the side of the screen here um, which is called a, a, a microscope. So by definition when we say a microscope we mean that uh, it is an instrument that is used to see those objects that are so small to be seen by our naked eyes. The microscope is used to magnify uh, tiny objects like cells and other small organisms. For example, when you talk about bacteria, you talk about uh, those um, organisms that cause disease, the germs, you can see them under a microscope. So that is basically what a microscope is all about. So when we talk about a cell, a cell is a building block for all living things. Building block. I would liken this to um, what we are calling, for example, when you are building a house. A, a house is built from bricks. So different bricks are laid so that you form a large building in which you can uh, live. So a body of an organism is made up of cells and these cells are so small, they are the building blocks, that they are too small to be seen by our naked eyes. For them to be seen, you will need the help of a microscope. So what we are going to look at, we are going to look at the different types of microscopes that exist. Okay, so there are different types depending on the use. So the simplest microscope is actually a hand lens. I've got a hand lens here, uh, which I'm holding. So a hand lens is a simple microscope because it can be used to magnify and view tiny objects. Uh, in, in some cases, at home, you can make um, a microscope out of just a bottle of uh, uh, water. So a transparent uh, plastic bottle can also be used. When you fill it with water, there's usually that bubble. You lie it horizontally on a piece of paper. If you have written tiny weights, you will be able to see that these weights actually become uh, magnified, they become larger, they become more visible to your eyes. That is also one form of a simple microscope you can make at home. But in the lab, we have a hand lens, sometimes called a magnifying glass. This is a simple microscope we use. The other type of a microscope is what we call uh, a compound microscope, sometimes referred to as a light microscope. In some cases, they call it a compound light microscope. So this, this is the microscope that you are able to see uh, uh, on your left side of your screen. Um, it, it is a microscope that actually may come in various sizes. So we have the large type, which is this one here, which can be used to see a, a lot more details uh, of uh, cells and uh, uh, other tiny organisms. Then we also have the smaller version, which is this one here. Uh, this is also a compound microscope, similar to this, except that it is smaller in terms of size. So this is the, these are the microscopes that we'll be able to look at in much more detail. But before we get into the details of these microscopes, um, the compound microscopes, I want to mention about the third type of microscope. And this is a type we call an electron microscope. This is the most powerful microscope um, that, uh, uh, that, that exists. Uh, this microscope is used to see even a very, very tiny uh, structure within a cell. So it is quite powerful and uh, not common 
uh, we may not have uh, these around because they are quite expensive. So the next part, we are going to, I'm going to take you through the various parts a microscope has and what each part is used for. Uh, we look at the parts of a compound microscope. Uh, the uh, apparatus you are able to see just in front of me here is actually a compound microscope which we use to view tiny objects like uh, cells. So we will be able to demonstrate uh, in terms of looking at the various parts a microscope has. So firstly, you will be able to note that the microscope has this part here. Uh, at the top, I think you are able to see that uh, there is some piece of glass that you will be able to see. Uh, this is not just ordinary glass, but it is what is called a, a lens. So you have a lens in here and you also have a lens in here. The type of lens that is used is actually a, one we call a convex lens, which is actually thicker in the middle and thin at the edge, similar to the lens that the hand lens is made from. That is the type of lens which is there. When you feel the hand lens, you are going to feel that actually it feels thicker at the middle and as you go to the, towards the edges, the uh, lens actually feels thinner. Okay, so that is a similar type of lens which exists, uh, which actually is placed uh, in these two. These are actually, these lenses, they are given a name, a special name, uh, because of the function, uh, they are called eyepiece lenses. They are called eyepiece lenses. The reason why they have been given uh, the eyepiece lenses, the name eyepiece, it's because of the function. So this is where the eyes are actually positioned as you are seeing the object or the specimen uh, under the microscope, the one that you are examining to see the various parts. So you position your eyes on the uh, specimen. So because there are two on the eyepiece, because there are two, so both eyes, you are going to use them and view under the microscope. You'll be able to see what actually is uh, uh, in, the, in the specimen. So sometimes they are called uh, ocular lenses because we use the eyes to see through. So their function is actually to magnify the, uh, the image of the specimen. So they help to increase the size of the uh, image of the specimen so that we are able to see it clearly. That is the function. So you are going to find that even the smaller one, it has only one uh, eyepiece at the top. So in this one, it means that you just need to use one eye to view through, just like that. One eye to view through. Then you'll be able to see clearly uh, the image of uh, the specimen. Now, you'll also be able to note that this eyepiece lens is fitted on a tube. There's a tube here on which the eyepiece is fitted. I'll check also from here, you're going to note that I can easily detach the lens from the, the tube. So, the tube is called the body tube. So the body tube is actually a tube on which the eyepiece lenses are mounted on one end and on the other end, you have a rotating nose piece which actually uh, it is on this rotating nose piece where you have uh, other lenses that are mounted there. So a rotating nose piece is this part here. This is the part we call the rotating nose piece. So why it is called a rotating nose piece? Because it is able to rotate. And this is where you have lenses. There are different lenses that are given, that are attached there. And these lenses are also uh, convex lenses. They are called objective lenses because they are near the object. The object is the one that you are going to observe under a microscope, the specimen. That is what we call an objective lens. So they are very close here, so they are called objective lenses. They also magnify the image of the specimen. So 
Now, we, all, we talked about magnification taking place on the eyepiece lenses. We have also talked about the uh, magnification or the image of the object being enlarged by the objective lenses. So it means that the image of the specimen is magnified twice. The first part is magnified by the objective lens, which we have here. Then the second part is that it is magnified by the eyepiece. So this helps you to get a large image. So magnification happens twice. So now, there are several objective lenses that are mounted on the uh, I am on the on the rotating nose piece. So you should be able to see that these, they have different power of magnification. How many times can they enlarge the size of the image? That is what we mean by magnifying power. So you have different lenses. For example, this one has four lenses. You have this one. Then you can rotate if you want to use this one. Uh, you can rotate. So you place this one in position, which has a different magnification from the previous one. Then you can rotate if you want to use that one, because it has also a different magnification from the previous one. Then you have the fourth one here, which also has a different magnification, depending on what you want to see and what details you want to see. Some of these lenses have a higher magnifying power, others they have a smaller magnifying power. Now, below the objective lens, you have a platform, which is here, okay? The platform is called a stage, okay? Now, the stage is simply uh, a platform where the specimen is placed on a specimen slide. Now, a specimen slide is simply a piece of glass. Usually, it is a rectangular glass that is used. Usually, a rectangular glass. It is on this glass that you are going to place your specimen. Then the specimen a slide, the specimen together with the slide is actually placed under the objective lenses on the platform we call the stage. Then the specimen slide is actually held in position by the stage clips. So you have a stage clip here to hold the specimen in position. So the stage actually has a hole so I can demonstrate even using this one, you are able to see the hole, so this is a smaller one. It has also a hole which is under, which comes up on top. So you place the specimen direct on that hole. That hole actually is simply to allow light from the bottom here to light up or to illuminate the image so that we are able to see clearly. If there's no light uh, coming onto the specimen, there's nothing that you can see in the specimen, uh, uh, in, in the eyepiece, uh, when you are able to observe here. So, <clears throat> at the bottom here, you have this part here. There are two parts. There's a lens under here, which is called a condenser lens, which actually, uh, by the term condenser, it helps to actually uh, cause rays of light that are coming from the bottom here to concentrate at a point, condensing the, the light so that it is brighter at a point. And that will give you a clear view of the specimen. So the other part you are able to see is that within here, there is what is called uh, this, if you're able to see this gear here, I'm able to move this side and that side. So this part actually uh, controls the size of the opening through which light is going to pass. So it actually, it is a diaphragm which actually opens and closes to allow a certain amount of light to pass through so that you can have a good view of the image of the specimen. Then below here, you have a source of light and a microscope like this one, the source of light is a light bulb. So it is a bulb here, I've got a switch, I can 
turn it on, so there's light that is coming, and that light passes through the diaphragm, and then from the diaphragm, it goes into the condenser lens, and from the condenser lens, it goes to the stage where the specimen is. So when you view here, you should be able to see the image of the specimen if you do the setting of your microscope. So you'll be able to see a clear image because of the light. Sometimes microscopes are not fitted with a bulb. Like for example this one, instead of having a bulb, it means that uh, you can have a mirror which can be positioned at an angle to reflect light from the environment. In this case, such a microscope cannot be used in a dark room because you always need a source of light uh, which the mirror is going to reflect into the stage. So probably if you are in the room, then you must place such a microscope near a window so that light from the window, the light that is entering the room through the window is able to reflect onto the stage. This type of microscope, which has a bow, uh, you can use it even in the dark, provided you have a source of electricity. So you simply power it on, the bulb will be able to produce light. You, however, cannot use such a microscope to view specimen when you do not have a source of power. Okay, the next part is what we call the adjusting knobs. So the adjusting knobs, uh, this microscope has two adjusting knobs here. You have this large one here and this small one here. So they are actually, it's like two in one kind of adjusting knob. The large part here, when you use this part and you are viewing, it is actually used to uh, focus. So focusing simply means that you are trying to bring the image of the specimen uh, into, so that you're able to view it clearly. You are trying to make the image of the specimen to be seen clearly. However, by adjusting this one, you will not be able to see a sharp image. So for you to be able to see a sharp image, you will need to use a smaller adjusting knob. The larger adjusting knob is called a coarse adjusting knob because it will not give you a, a very fine uh, image. So for you to get a fine image, it means that you have to adjust using this smaller adjusting knob, which is called the fine adjusting knob. In that way, you'll be able to see the image of the specimen clearly. Now, the other part you are going to see in the microscope is that the microscope, all the parts of the microscope are actually uh, mounted on this structure. And this structure is called the arm. So this is the arm of the microscope. And its function is simply uh, to hold all the parts of the microscope. This is where all the parts of the microscope are attached. Look at the eyepiece lenses, they are attached to the sun. The nose piece is attached to the arm. The stage is attached to the arm at that point. The adjusting knobs are attached to the, to the stem. The other function of the stem is for you to hold when you are moving the microscope from one point in, to another. So from one point to another, you hold the arm using one hand. Then you have the base. One hand holds the base, while the other hand holds the arm. Then you can move the microscope from one point to another. This is how we hold the microscope. So the function of the base is, first of all, this is where the microscope sits. The other function is that one hand holds the base, the other hand holds the stem to move the microscope from one point to another. So we have come to the end of the lesson. Uh, we'll see you.